right, fans. You've probably had enough of the Haunt World video, so you want to change a pace. Kevin McCurdy's Haunted Mansion, he made four, I believe four, how-to videos. This is part two. You're gonna see the videos that Kevin McCurdy made all the way back in, I don't even know when they were made. They were made in the 90s or the early 2000s. No one's for sure at this point because it was that long ago. But make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We are uploading these blasts from the past videos so you could understand where the haunt industry started, which it kind of, as a professional industry, started in the late 90s, early 90s, somewhere in that range. And of course, it's never been bigger than it is today. So this is Kevin McCurdy's Secrets of the Haunted Mansion, which is mostly a theming video. And this is how it was done back then. You ready? Kevin McCurdy's Secrets of the Haunted Mansion, part two, right now. to be scary. No, it has to look good, but it has to be scary. But it has to look good. Oh. I got it. I'll make something that's scary and looks good. Hm. I gotta get down to the lab. He has taken a special in Kevin McCurdy, and on this volume of Secrets of the Hornet Mansion, we're <laughs>
all still here? You must heed my warning. Don't let your greed control your destiny. Perhaps I can persuade you further. That night, the demon who had taken on Frederick's form entered the room. supposed to see the bride before the ceremony? My machine is a success. That's wonderful. Did you contact her? I did, and it was wonderful. So wonderful, I'd like you to join us there. disappear, but I can't find him anywhere. Uh, we're going to have to go down and take a look. Uh, you're certainly welcome to come with us. It's just down the hall. Oh, before we go, can I get a soda? Uh, you'll have to order a small. Uh, never mind, we'll pick up something on the way. like this one, 
and then uh, we'll take some tree branches and put it in front of the spandex, and then we'll put a piece of plexiglass in. And you'll be surprised how realistic this little scene works. And if you like, you can add uh, a glow-in-the-dark moon behind there, or even a ghost, if you, anything that glows in black light. But using the spandex as, a, um, as sort of a screen in between the two makes it look realistic. And that's our little illusion tip here at the Illusion Lab. And now let's go back and find out how to make these great gothic windows. Ah, oh, Igor, what's the matter? Oh, Master, I've run out of time. I can't finish this set. There's not enough time. I tried. Oh, I tried. That's okay. It's all right, Igor. I, you know, a lot of people get upset when they run out of time and they can't finish a set or something that they're doing in their haunted mm -hmm. house. But you know what? I'll help you out here. I know you're going to work on this window. Why don't you go get some paint? When you come back, we'll paint some stones on the wall. All right. Well, it looks like Igor started to build this gothic window over here. And he's cut out the shape of the window and the wall and framed it up with some 1x4 pine. He's also taken some scrap pine and cut out this arch in two pieces. And we screwed that to the wall. Now, we want to dress it up a little bit more than that. And we want to make it look like there's a lot of fancy molding around this window. It's really easy to do. All you need is some pipe insulation. Oh, here's a piece now. Um, pipe insulation is used, of course, to insulate pipes down in your basement. And uh, it's sold in packages. Oh, here's a package now. And uh, this happens to be made by Cross King, which you get four pieces for about $3. It's relatively inexpensive. And uh, find this package. And it also comes in uh, different sizes, different diameters. Oh, here's a big piece. So uh, you can see uh, that'll help uh, add a little variety to the molding. Okay, so first thing we're going to do over here is uh, take a razor blade, and we're only going to use half of the, uh, the diameter here. So what we're going to do is it comes with this nice little slit in it. And if you break that open, you can slide it right over the pipe. Well, in this case, we're just going to cut through the rest of the way with this razor blade. Being very careful, we have to cut ourselves. And this is the way I like to cut it. Just cut right through, and then we're going to go back and on the exact opposite side of that cut, we're going to cut it directly in half here. We're going to make our own cut. And this one's a little trickier because you've got to do it nice and straight. It takes some practice. It's easy to, to straight to the left and right here a little bit. And there you have it, two pieces. Now we have a flat side to it, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the hot glue gun, which is right here. Thank you. And uh, we're going to take this hot glue, and we're going to just put a little bit on here. We don't want the hot glue too hot, or again, it will melt through the foam. And we're just going to press it on the wall, just like so, hot gluing it down. And once it's on there, you can take your hot glue gun and just put a little bead down the other side. And that'll hold it. Now here at the bottom, this stuff is so easy to work with, we're just going to, like, cut through this, make a little angle cut, and we're going to miter another piece on here, see at a 45 degree angle, so it looks like real molding. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You get them pretty close, the foam kind of squishes together, and there's your, there's your, uh, your miter corner, and we'll just hot glue that on, like so, and that becomes the bottom of our molding. Now, what we're going to do is take the other piece that's a little bit wider, make that into half, like so. Try to get it exactly in half. Okay, and we're going to use this on the outside. So we're going to have a small one, and then we're going to have a large one here, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that on. And we'll take our next piece, run that little bead down here, okay, there we go, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take another wide piece here, and we're going to go up along the arch, just like this, we'll measure approximately how much we need, and just cut it off, and this time we'll run a strip of hot glue here, bead of hot glue, and we'll just pack this right on. I'm gonna leave a little space because we're gonna we're gonna make a little fancy decoration there in the corner. Right? Just 
which basically goes on like that. Okay. Well, the next step is to create a gothic pattern here in the center. So let's go out and I'll show you how to do that with the jigsaw. Now, to dress up our window, we're going to make a little gothic arch. And I have traced out half of my arch on uh, this piece of scrap quarter-inch Luon. Uh, I've got two pieces here, and I'm just going to finish screwing them together. That way, we'll cut out both uh, patterns at the same time. OK. So I've got that ready to go. I'm going to take the jigsaw, and I'm going to start cutting that design out. Okay, we've got all this cut out, and now we're going to cut out these. First, we're going to drill a hole here. That way we can get our jigsaw blade in and cut out those little sections. All right, well, here's our little gothic arch pattern that we cut out, and that's going to look great up here in the window, just like that. And we're going to screw that in place, and then I think I'll go get some flat black paint and paint the whole thing a base color, flat black. I know how Igor hates to do that. So I'll, I'll see you then. Okay, everything's painted black, and now I've got a little white on the brush here. And we're just going to age this. I'm going to drag the white a little bit. Now the black underneath is still wet, which is uh, very important. I'm going to just drag this up and down, just like this. A little, little dry brushing, they call. Just, uh, I, don't, I have very, very little paint on the brush at this point. Let me just get some more white here. And now we're going to highlight the top side of the mold in here with a little bit more white like this. But we're going to leave it very dark and very black in between. So we'll do the second one here. See how it makes it stand right out? Just like so. And we'll kind of go over everything very, very lightly. And that has a kind of a nice look to it. There's a little bit more white right there. Okay. And we're going to continue on. Up here I've added a little piece of that pipe insulation as a molding. You see that there? And now I'm going to highlight that also. I hot glue that on to the edge of the Luan arch here. And see, that makes it look really nice. And we're going to, again, we're going to leave it dark in here and just highlight the raised areas. There's another raised area right here that that pine creates. And we'll highlight that. And maybe just a little white in there, but we'll leave it dark. But. And we've got our outer molding here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put the, the white on the very front edge and blend it in a little bit. So you see that's coming along pretty nice. And at the end, you can go back and spatter this with a little uh, lighter gray paint and uh, dilute it with uh, some water. And you get a little bit of that, and you sit here and do the old spatter technique. Now that's coming along real good. Now what I want to do is go back and paint some stones on the wall before Igor gets back. Let's surprise him.
engraved stones out of some styrofoam today. Now there are different types of styrofoam. There's a white beaded styrofoam, a pink styrofoam, and a blue styrofoam. They're all meant to insulate your house. Um, the pink and blue are a little bit more sturdy than the white beaded foam. So if you use the white beaded foam to make tombstones, make sure they're away from the audience because they're not going to hold up very well. The white foam can also be coated, which we'll show you a little bit later. Uh, we're going to be making the tombstones today out of the pink foam. Just be aware that the project involves heating the foam, and when you heat this foam, it does give off toxic fumes. So please, do this project outside with plenty of ventilation. Now, before we get started, we're going to want to go down to the local cemetery. And at, when we're at the cemetery... Master! Master Igor! Wh what did you do? I went to the local cemetery and got a grave. No, 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 no. I didn't mean go down and get a gravestone. I just meant go down and draw some gravestones. Oh! Oh. Um, I'll go put this back. Yeah, I think you better. And in the same spot, please. Well, anyway, after you get some designs, come back and we'll start to draw out the tombstones. Okay, so once you've got your design ready, uh, then you can transfer it over to the styrofoam. Uh, Igor, you're working on one. Let's see yours. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, I'm not getting it. I, this was supposed to be a headstone. Headstone? Oh, I thought you said stone head. Stone head. No, no headstone, Igor. Now, I'll tell you what. Why don't you just help me work on this one, and we'll do this together. Okay? <laughs> Gotta get rid of that cat. Well, anyway... Okay, so we've only done, traced half the design on the styrofoam right now, and there's a little trick I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to use a jigsaw to cut this out, and uh, then we're going to flip it over. Okay, now we're going to take this piece that we cut out, and we're going to flip it over and match the other side, just like this. I'm going to draw that out, so I've transferred the same pattern over to the other side, and that way both sides will be symmetrical. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And it's not important to be uh, too perfect here. This is going to be an old gravestone, and we're only going to rough it up a little bit later. So uh, let's go on to the next step. Now, Igor, we have our design all laid out on our styrofoam. It's all cut out, and we need to rough it up a little bit to give it some age. So grab right that sander there. <coughs> Careful with that. Careful. We're just going to take the, uh, the air sander, the disc sander here, and we're going to rough up the edges. <laughs> taken the sander and we've roughed up all these edges and now Igor is going to take the heat gun and he's going to pass it over here and create some depressions in the styrofoam and that will give it an aged look and it will look more like stone. You're also going to go over the edges of what we've sanded to kind of blend it in all together and that's going to kind of melt that down. But you want to make sure you're keeping that heat gun moving constantly because you could put a hole right in the styrofoam and remember the toxic fumes are very, very toxic. You should be outside, well-ventilated area, uh, because breathing these toxic fumes can be very, very dangerous to your health. What's that? Can you see that? Like an older dog. Still in the shot here. Let's go back to this side. Okay, so our styrofoam has been sufficiently roughed up and aged a bit, 
and we're ready to put some lettering on the tombstone. Uh, you can be creative, uh, think of some funny epitaphs, you can have your friends' names on there, uh, kind of a monument to your cast or crew. Uh, today, for, uh, for uh, ease sake, we're just going to uh, write R.I.P. And the way we're going to do it is I've sketched it out here on the gravestone. And you can either use a, a router, or this happens to be a little trimmer router here, uh, or you can use a Dremel tool, uh, or you can use a very sharp X-Acto knife. But these things work pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to carve the letters in. And first, we're going to take the Dremel tool like this, and we're going to carve it in at this angle. We're going to run it through at this angle. And then we're going to switch sides, and we're going to carve it through at this angle. And that will give it that chiseled in look. Okay, let's try some more of this. You can see how that's coming along. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the uh, rest of the lettering here, and then we'll be ready to paint. Uh, Igor, can you get the paint ready? Yes, master. Okay, we finished up this RIP here, and uh, we're ready to go ahead and paint the tombstone. So, the first master, one, master, you forgot one important detail. Oh my goodness! You forgot the frou frou. The frou frou. I almost forgot the frou frou. Uh, Frou-frou is what we call uh, latex casts of different little faces and decorative objects that we find laying around. We make a simple plaster mold of them, and uh, we get this uh, this stuff. Uh, funny, give me a good scary face, Igor. Ah! No, no, from the box. Not a scary face. Uh, there is a good scary face. Very good. Okay, this is a little uh, panther face here with some scrolls on it, and that's going to fit just about perfect, wouldn't you say? The top of the tombstone like that. Boy, it makes you feel like home, doesn't it? Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to glue that down with a little bit of hot glue. If you want the hot glue too hot, because it'll melt the styrofoam. But uh, if you turn it on and just uh, wait for it to heat up just enough where you can start to put the glue down, we'll just glue this right on. And now I'm going to give Igor the job of uh, painting this tombstone black, the entire thing. Just paint it flat block. You think you can handle that? Yes, master. All right. And the brush, go to work. Black, always black. The master never lets me paint any of the creative stuff. Always black. Then he comes over here and says, Why, Igor, that's the best flat black paint job I've ever seen. Black. How's it going, Igor? Are you done? Oh, wow. Now that's the best flat black paint job I've ever seen. All right. Well, it's time now, then, to... Uh, add another color, and uh, we're just going to use white. We're going to do this real simple, but you know, gravestones do come in many colors. So for variety in your graveyard, you want to pick and choose different shades of browns and grays, and uh, again, take a look at the local cemetery and find out uh, what colors you should be using. But um, in our last video, we showed you how to paint stones, and this is very, very similar. I'm just going to take some white on a brush, and we're going to kind of dab the brush and very, very little white, as a matter of fact. I'm going to take some of this white off of here. I've got a little too much on. We're going to take, uh, and we're going to dab the brush. It's called stippling. And we're going to kind of stipple the white right on here. Now, you want to do this while the black is still wet. Okay? And you want to also avoid getting lines in the paint job. Big rats in the shop. Okay, there you go. How's that look? Now that kind of looks like granite, okay, but don't take it for granite. <laughs> uh, sorry, we had to do that joke. And we're just going to continue on stippling, just like this. I'm going to add just a little tiny bit more paint to there, to the brush. And now we come to the painting of the frou-frou, which is always a lot of fun because we get to highlight the fruit for Right now, you can't see that because it's very, very dark, very black. What we do is we take a little bit more paint on the brush, and now what we're going to be doing is something called dry brushing, where we take and just drag the brush very lightly. I'm just letting the weight of that paintbrush 
hit the frou-frou so that it drags it across the tops of all the highlights of that latex piece. And see how that brings it right out? <coughs> now you can see the uh, panther or whatever that is there. Demon panther. And we're going to go in one direction and back the other direction until we get it highlighted, just like that. Okay? And then we can go back and we can add some lighter spots and maybe by using the end of the brush like this, look at we've got a a little uh, line going through the granite, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. And again down here by the letters, we'll leave the depressions of the, of the, the card part of the letter. We'll leave that very dark. And we'll just highlight the rest of it. Like this. How's that look? Very nice. Would you like to do some of the uh, creative right. painting here? I mean, you know, it's, it's probably about time that you've been painting flat black for so long. Go ahead. Why don't you try stippling, uh, Igor, and uh, we'll come back in a little while. There we go. Oh, well, really good. Oh. Oh, Igor! <laughs> Boy, that's the best stippling job I've ever seen. Do you know what I forgot? I forgot to show them a little bit about the sponge. Uh, if you don't like stippling, you like stippling, Igor? Oh, yes, master. Mm. If you don't like to do stippling, or uh, if you want an easier way of doing that, uh, what you do is you just take a sponge, and you want to rip off the, uh, the square edge so you don't leave the imprint when you uh, use the paint, and dip it in a little bit of paint there, and then take your tombstone, and just go along the end like this. See how that white highlights that, and the little parts that we sanded are still there, and they're darker. I just go around the tombstone. No, I'm not doing this over. I'm just, I'm just showing them another way here to highlight the tombstone. Okay, just like that. And you can create all kinds of like little veins in the in the granite at some point. Okay. So there you have it, and it uh, looks pretty good. You just dress that up with a little bit of moss, like you'd find in the bottom of uh, like a planter. You can spray glue that on, and you'd be all set to go. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jim has been making uh, another tombstone. Let's show him this one, too. It's, uh, it's going to be a little monument. It's going to be a little obelisk, it's called. And he's taken some uh, pink foam and cut that up. And uh, this is the top of a fence post. Uh, we just cut that off. That's going to go on top. And we're going to make a nice base for that. So you can see there's a lot of uses for, uh, for the styrofoam and uh, making uh, different ornaments for the graveyard. Now, uh, Igor, there's about 132 more gravestones to do. I'll be back in about an hour, okay? Let's say you're creating a laboratory scene. And let's say you need some laboratory machines. Let's say you don't have a budget. Well, I say, let's go back to the shop and we'll show you how to make a lab machine that'll make Frankenstein green with envy. Come on, let's go. I'm going to show you how to make those machines now. And uh, what we've done is made a little Luan rectangle here. But you can design your machine however it has to look. Uh, maybe for like a Frankenstein lab or a space lab or any other kind of lab. But uh, this is just going to be maybe a control panel. And uh, what we've done on this side of the box is I've screwed a piece of quarter-inch white opaque acrylic plexiglass, and um, it has a it comes with a protective paper on it like this. And we're going to actually use the protective paper. Um, we're going to make this control panel light up in certain areas. And what we've done is I've started to lay out some patterns here um, of some circles that are going to light up. And there's some uh, rectangles over here. I'm going to finish drawing these out and then I'm going to show you the next step, okay? On anything that we want to light up uh, on the paper, on the protective paper, on the plexi. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut those designs out. But we're not going to peel off the protective paper yet, okay? So we're just going to take an X-Acto knife here, a utility knife, and we're going to start cutting these out. Like so. And when we get them all cut out, uh, we're going to give this entire piece of paper, the paper on here, a coat of black paint. And we're just going to brush on a coat of black. So let me cut these out. I'm going to paint this black. We're not going to peel anything off yet. I'll show you. Okay, we've uh, painted this black now. And now we're finally ready to peel these 
pieces that we've cut off, just like this. And you see the white plexiglass showing through there. There's another one. Now these are eventually going to become dials that are lit up on the machine. We just peel this off. And we're going to have to put a light inside this light box. And sometimes it's good if you don't if you don't need a blinking light or anything, you can buy a small fluorescent tube, little 18-inch tubes called bright sticks. And they work really nice. They're fairly inexpensive. And they'll light it up really nice for you. If you wanted any of these to be a certain color, you can take a small piece of theatrical gel and just uh, put it behind the different areas that are going to light up and then they'll light up in color for you. And you can put a blinking light back there. You can even put some Christmas lights back there. It'll have a different effect. Okay, well that's all that we've cut out. And now we're ready to take a bunch of junk and turn it into something that looks like a machine. Um, so we'll start with this being the basic thing. And uh, something that's pretty good for knobs, little knobs, you can use wire nuts. Um, different sizes of wire nuts. And we're just going to start hot gluing. And I'm going to bring all this junk that I have over here. And uh, just start hot gluing it onto the machine. What's really cool is throughout the year, if you find these little... I'm always looking for like little things to to use on machines and stuff. And I just keep putting it in boxes. And I know my wife uh, goes crazy because I save all this stuff. It's probably like a lot of you out there that we just have saved so many things over the years, knowing that they will come in handy someday. I'm sure, right? But uh, most of the time they do. Okay, we put a few knobs on there. What's really neat is you ever get like boxes of candy or tins of candy and you got these like little candy tray things. Uh, there's a ton of different knobs right there if you want to take and cut them out or if you want to cut out like a whole section and put that on the machine. But stuff like this, it's just garbage uh, that you throw away probably every day. Um, let's see, let's pull, pull, up, pull over some of the junk over there that we've got. Here we got, uh, this comes from an old uh, makeup uh, jar. Uh, really cool like lens looking thing. Uh, pieces of PVC. Old uh, plastic boxes. Uh, you know what that is. That, that, that's going to come in handy on the machine. Uh, old plastic parts to different things. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite things to do is to take um, old junk stereos that people throw away. And we actually give it to our very professional uh, handyman who is going to demonstrate now on how we um, delicately take those pieces apart. Finished up uh, gluing some of these pieces on here. Don't forget to put that cap from your sports bottle on, and some PVC, and got some uh, some hose here that I found laying around. So it's, uh, it's starting to look pretty good. And now what I'd like to do is um, just take some spray paint. I'm going to spray everything black because uh, I like to start out with everything everything being black, and then uh, we'll start to highlight some of the pieces, gray and silver and so forth. So I'm just going to spray it. Everything's painted black. Once you get it all painted black, you'll start to see that now things don't look like wire nuts and PVC and so forth. It's all one color. Okay, now what we're going to do is I've got a little silver paint here, and I'm just going to dip the brush in, and uh, we're going to dry brush over some of these pieces. Let's start up here, because I think you'll be able to really see it up here on the top. Okay, I'm just going to take, I got a little too much, I'm going to take some off, and going to start to dry brush it around like this. See that? Okay, maybe we'll even dry brush the tube. 
kind of see how the raised points of everything will pick that silver pane up. And uh, like that. Then we'll dab a little bit on here and there. And you just want to be able to make sure that it uh, picks up all the raised pieces just like that. Okay? Now, we'll do that. Move it down here. And you can see now it starts to look more like a machine. Now for the dials that are going to light up a little bit later, what we're, what we're going to do there is we're just going to take a magic marker and we're going to put our numbers in and put some little scale lines on there and that'll look like a, a dial that's lit up. Maybe a little bit more silver to make this box stand out. One thing about the wire nuts is uh, for the knobs, if you've got actors that are uh, supposed to be playing around, you may want to secure these a little bit better than uh, hot glue. Or you can go to a uh, surplus uh, catalog or a Radio Shack and get some really cool looking knobs, depending on how, how much effort you really want to put into this. And if you just dry brush the whole thing a little bit, just like that. And you can take some gray paint and go back and start to make these things a little bit more uh, prominent by painting like this area gray and so forth. But that's the, the general way to make a cheap machine. This took me about uh, 20 minutes to, to do um, once you make your box. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And like I say, you can save all these things throughout the year. You know, anything that you're going to throw out, put in a box. And uh, come the time when you want to build a, one of these machines, you'll have everything uh, laying around. Okay? Another episode of This Old Haunted House. Oh, uh, well, here we have our uh, assistant, Igor. He seems to be painting today. What are you painting, Igor? I'm painting this stone pillar, Mr. McCurdy. Oh, I see. And w how did you start this one off? Well, first I started out with a base coat, flat gray, over the pillar. Okay. Just a regular flat gray. Paint the whole pillar. Okay. Then I went back with some black paint, and I added in, like, the cracks and the weathering effects in here. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. It looks like a stone pillar. I see you've added black in the uh, in the little crevices here inside the molding, maybe that's where some dirt is accumulated or whatever. And then you spattered it. Yes, spattering, sp spattering, taking some a little black on the brush, black paint, and diluted it with some water, and spatter that on. That makes it look like it's stone. And then it looks like you've also sprayed it a little yes. bit. Very, very nice. And uh, back here, uh, what'd you do? This is brick. Oh wait, this is not brick at all. They're not real bricks. I can't believe it. It looks so real. That's vac form brick. Vacuum form brick. Okay, now, that's a whole. There's a whole bunch of different vac form scenery pieces that you can buy. This happens to be an old, it's called old brick. And uh, how'd you start off with that? Well, first we painted the uh, the motor lines with the white. Right. Okay. You sprayed that on first. You spray the whole thing. Right. Okay. Then we go back with the roller and paint on the reddish brown color of the bricks. Okay. So you want to just take the roller and just roll across it. And that highlights the tops of the bricks, but it still leaves the mortar lines, right? And then you go back and you add some black and some highlights on the different colors of the bricks. So they look different. You make each brick look a little different, because not all bricks are the exact same color. And you spatted that again. That's right. Wow, it looks just like real brick. Vac form scenery is very useful. As a matter of fact, here's a vac form capital top for a, uh, for a pillar. And uh, where, where might I find one of those, Mr. McCurdy? You know, it's funny you should ask, because these pieces are available from Imagine Art Studios. We're going to have to look into that. So anyway, uh, we're going to go back to the shop now and see how you can create some really neat moldings, okay? And that's something that adds a lot of detail to the scene. Now this whole facade here, this crypt, looks excellent because the attention to detail. And these moldings were, were done just with one by two strips, nothing expensive. Uh, we've taken some old molding and put it on, on the inside there. And uh, we're going to go back to the shop and show you how to create some fancy moldings with some really, really cheap lumber, okay? And Igor, I have one more question for you. Why is there no paint on that brush? Because I was faking it.
talk about detail for a minute. Uh, here's an easy way to dress up a scene or add, add a little uh, something special to a prop or a doorway or a ceiling. You can do some fancy molding and you don't have to go buy it either and spend a ton of money. All you need is some 1x2s. I have a couple 1x2s here and this one I've ripped out on the table saw so it's a little bit thinner and you can make a variety of different sizes. Then what you do is you take and you stack them. Okay, one by two with a smaller piece of one by uh, two that's been cut down and maybe another piece on top of that. And if you can see the end there, you'd, uh, you'd put them all together and then you've got a, a nice uh, molding with a lot of lines in it there that can be highlighted when you paint it. Now a lot of your rooms are going to be pretty dark, so what you want to do when you're painting is put a shadow in. Anywhere there would be a shadow, paint the shadow right on, okay? Add a little darker color or a little black in there and paint that right in each of the lines. And you'll be surprised how something like that really dresses up a scene and makes everything look more realistic. Here's another uh, inexpensive way. How about all those scraps that you throw out, all those little pieces? Well, you take them, you cut them all the same size, and watch this. All you have to do is you take them and you glue them on here like this. You can even use one as a spacer like I'm doing. Okay, just like this. Okay, and look at that. Now, you've got a fantastic cornice molding. All you have to do is cap it off with another piece, just like this. So you tack all those down, and when you paint it, make sure that you're painting the, the little um, spaces here with a darker color, even if you go back a little bit later with a small brush and just they have a little color. Remember, everything's going to be in a low light level and that will really bring out those blocks and maybe this would look good around the top of a tomb or uh, top of a mausoleum and uh, there you have another way of doing some inexpensive molding with just the scrap wood that you're going to be throwing out. Okay, now there's one more trick I'd like to show you. And this is a pretty inexpensive way of doing something that may look good around a casket or around a smaller prop. Take a look at this. With this technique, this is a real trick because with this technique what I'm going to do is take a hot glue gun and just draw a design on the wood in hot glue. Just like this. That can be any design you like. I'm just doing a simple little thing here. And you don't want the, the uh, hot glue too hot because then it will just spread out. So. Um, Plug the gun in for a few minutes and then and then unplug it so it doesn't get too hot. And again, I'm just going to add some texture. These designs don't have to be perfect. Okay. Now that might not look like much right now, but check out once we paint it here. So that's the design that I've made in hot glue. And, and you can do this around, uh, say if you had a, a small item that you want to decorate uh, and is not going to be seen up close or not going to be seen for you know any uh, long period of time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint all this and check out how it looks. Watch this. Well, I know what you're saying. It, uh, it looks black. That's right. But here's the trick. You take a little gold paint here and watch this. We're going to actually dry brush that Look at this. Here it comes. See the design stands right out, and look at that. You get some uh, some fancy molding. Check that out. And again, it doesn't matter if this is going to be seen very briefly. Um, that can add quite a bit to a prop, make it look uh, fancy or more realistic. Okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to be showing you uh, where the lost temple is. Oh. <laughs> We're the, uh, this is the map to the Lost Temple. Follow me. I know it's got to be around here someplace. Oh, here it is. Right here. Come on with me. We're going to go visit Chris. Hi, Chris. Well, howdy there, Kev. Yeah, Chris is our master stone uh, craftsman. Uh, these are uh, stones here? Sure they are, Kev. Oh, wait a minute. 
These are only styrofoam stoves, aren't they? Oh, you caught me there! Wow. It's true. Seriously, folks, these are two-inch white beaded styrofoam pieces that we cut out in any various shape we want and placed right here. So they're glued on here with like a liquid nails or uh, some kind of foam cement, right? You can use liquid nail or any various other type of styrofoam adhesive. Okay. And uh, we made a, like a plywood column that these are on, uh, that these are attached to. And uh, boy, that looks great with a little paint job. And uh, how'd you make it look like the stones were all uh, pitted here and carved away? Well, you see us tricks of the trade. We use a small keyhole saw to just make the edges slightly jagged in formations wow. in there. And with the right paint job, with the darks and the lights and different colored browns, a little spattering again, that looks great. Well, there's one up here that looks a little crooked. Was that on purpose? Yes, it was, as a matter of fact. Ah, and uh, Chris, what are these made out of? Well, Kev, those are vines. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, you want to make sure if you're using vines inside, though, that uh, they're sprayed with fire retardant spray. But very nice look to the Lost Temple. Chris, I'm going to let you resume. Thanks a lot. We're going over to Western Town now. Okay. Oh, here we are in the ghost town, a little western street that we've created out here on Freight Trail. Uh, now, this is one of my favorite little scenes. When it's lit up at night, it looks really, really scary. Something you don't want to go inside. This is the Split Beam Mine Company. And inside, it's infested with rats. Yep, that's right, rats, big ones. Uh, that was the story behind this little scene. And what we've done is we've created this entire thing with just all our scrap wood. Now, we've painted on some wood grain here. And we've also done another technique to, to represent wood graining. You see these boards here? We've taken some joint compound that you would uh, uh, spackle walls with. And we've applied a very thin layer with a paintbrush. Then we've taken an adhesive spreader for linoleum glue. And we've taken and dragged that across. And that will create all the lines. Now when that dries, you can go back and highlight that with some lighter color paint. And that'll look just like, just like, uh, like the wood grain, uh, like an old piece of weathered wood. Okay, here's a little filler scene that we added to a, a little space that we had. We didn't know exactly what to do with Well, we decided, since they're walking under the Haunted Mansion, uh, to make a little basement scene here. And we've used that vac form brick again. Uh, this time we've given it a light coat of gray. Um, and the scare comes from behind this door. When the actor opens up the door, it hits this chain here. So it gives not only the scare of the actor, but a loud noise, which is very important. Uh, we also, as a little feature to the scene, came up with this warehouse light up here uh, with a light bulb that's just barely on because blood is dripping out of the, uh, of the electrical socket. And uh, we came up with a way of illuminating the bulb by a, a little battery powered or low volt powered light. And um, you can buy a plastic light bulb that's uh, it's called the atomic light bulb. It's an old novelty item that lights up when you hold it in your hand. You could use that with its battery operated light inside. And then on the top, we've just rigged up a little um, hose that goes to a small fountain pump that's available at most uh, home stores. And by, uh, by crimping the tube, we allow just enough so the blood drips out of the tube, comes down the light bulb, and then down into a basin, which catches the blood and recirculates it. What we've done with the blood is we've watered down uh, Stein's theatrical blood enough to have it go through the pump, but you should clean out your pump every weekend. Um, but basically that's it, so it's a nice little scare. The people come in, they see the blood dripping from the light bulb, the actor scares them here, and it's also a nice set. We've used other pieces, some old electrical boxes that we found lying around, uh, some old wiring and so forth, and it uh, really gives you that creepy feeling like you're in a, in a basement. Pretty cold in here too. Uh, let's go someplace a little bit warmer. <laughs> the slam door. It's a door that we built out of some, uh, some plywood and some one by twos. And then in the center here, we've taken and made a recessed panel like an ordinary door would have. But the trick is that the recessed panel is actually on two tracks on the inside of the door. So the actor behind the door, all he has to do is unlatch it. When the group goes by, he unlatches it back. Whoa, scared me a little bit. And actually the, the middle slides out and then the actor pops out from behind the door. Now let's go back to the shop and we'll show you how to make one of these really simple. After you've got your piece of uh, luon cut out to the size of the door that you need, what you want to do is mark out 
the interior panel that is going to slide. And we'd like to leave about four inches on the top and about three inches on either side, just like this. And that's all marked out. And now we're going to cut that out. And um, we'll cut that out with a jigsaw. And uh, then I'll show you the next step from here. The jigsaw, and we have our door with a hole in it. And now we're ready to frame it up. Uh, I've cut two pieces, one for either side of the door, of one by two, which uh, it can be thicker if you like. But in this case, we need to make a one by two frame. I have one piece for either side, and one piece for the top, and one piece down there for the bottom. And we're going to glue the frame together, and you, know, you should always glue everything together, of course. And if you like, you can uh, screw this together, but we have a, uh, an air bradder, which is something that uh, if you're making a lot of props, you definitely want to invest in, because it's a worthwhile investment. Uh, makes everything nice and quick. And we'll glue the other side. We'll put this whole frame together and then we will attach the Luon to the frame. Frame on the door now and that's all nice and glued up and sturdy. And now it's time to put the track on. And what we use for track is uh, something called J-channel. It's made for uh, sheetrock edging. And what you want to do is very inexpensive and what you want to do is cut it so it fits inside the, the framework of your door here and we'll lay it right in like this and if you notice the flat part, the wider part is, is down against the face of the door Okay. and what we want to do is look, put a little liquid nails in there to hold that track in and that will hold it in until we get the back piece on, which I'll show you in a second put the one track on first. Now this is your sliding door, okay? That will actually go slip in the one side of the track. You'll slip the other side of the track on. Lay it right in there. So that's held in now in the track. It seems to be sliding pretty nice. Now you gotta make sure that this door is about a quarter of an inch less than your frame, okay? So that it doesn't bind and it slides up and down really easily like that, okay? Now to hold in those tracks a little bit better, we're going to take another piece of 1x2 and place it right on top of the track, just like that. You see how that sandwich, sandwiches that track right in there like that. Now we're going to glue and air staple that in, and it looks like the sliding part of the door is working pretty well. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to put a, a block of wood up there as a handle. I'll show you how to do that, and uh, we'll be almost ready to try it out. For a handle, all we're going to do is take a block of wood, and we're going to glue that onto the sliding door part, just like this. And then we'll put a couple screws in from the other side. Just like that. So it's held on really nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is when the door is lifted up to its up position, we'll get a hook and eye, and we'll put that from the top of the door and into that handle. So the actor just has to let that hook off and then down goes the door. Let's turn this uh, right side up here and see how it's working. There we go. Okay, when you paint this door up, uh, you can paint this to look just like a recessed panel in the door like we showed you down at the Haunted Mansion. And all of a sudden, people walk by and it makes a really loud noise too, which is really good. Okay. Well folks, that's it for Secrets of the Haunted Mansion Volume 2. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you learned a lot. Take care and happy haunting. <clears throat> Thanks for watching Kevin McCurdy's Secrets of the Haunted Mansion Part 2. I did ask him if he minded if we uploaded these videos. He said absolutely not. It's an absolute blast and pleasure for everyone in the industry to enjoy these videos for years to come. Not to mention, can you imagine somebody watching these videos a hundred years from now? What would they think? I mean, who knows? Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more videos coming, including brand new haunts with new tours. So please like and subscribe. Take care. For scary videos and more, subscribe to our YouTube page, huntworld.com.